The Diversified Farm, Unit 12. Well, we made it to the end. Have you made some decisions? Are you going to be a farmer? Are you for a long time ago decided no? I don't think I want to be a farmer. Am I going to just do it for a hobby? Am I going to try to make some money? Well, we've made it. I'm glad. I think it's been successful. And as we talk about uh, the last unit, we're just going to talk about the advantage of diversification and what you can do to help ensure some success. Otto Leopold, the father of conservation, said, There are two spiritual dangers in not owning a farm. One is the danger of supposing that breakfast comes from the grocery, and the other, that heat comes from the furnace. And I just like that quote as it relates to our self-dependence, our less reliance on somebody else, taking control with a little bit of hard work and make a difference in the world. I encourage you to look at the Sand County Almanac, a very nice, a very nice read, a very good author, a great man. So here's the question. Do you want to be a farmer? And after 12 weeks, we should have a pretty good idea of that's something that we want to do. I hope I've led you down a path that allows you to explore some of those areas and that you have a plan for the future and know what has to be accomplished before that's going to happen. So I'm ready to commit. Now what do I do? Well, we've talked about the four business resources. And you have to decide what of those four business resources you have to get lined up. <clears throat> I still think land is a pretty easy resource and it's pretty available in a small scale. I don't think land is a, is a hold up. Labor. That's a decision you have to make. How many hours a week can you commit? When can you commit? Are you going to hire somebody? Do you have family? And so now it comes down to the capital requirements, which I my biggest my biggest belief in small farm production is it doesn't require a lot of capital, and that's why there's potential. Some training opportunities. I have a list here of three different places that provide training and I think there's a lot more than the list I'm giving you. Um, I'm currently in the new Illinois Fruit and Vegetable Farmer Program that's being taught by University of Illinois and I think it's very very well done. It exposes you to a lot of the things I've tried to expose you to in this class and it's also helped me I believe in the development of this class. The Beginning Farmer Center, Iowa State, The Land Connection, Farm Beginnings, great tools for you to secure some training. Some internships. I encourage you to go to Henry's Farm website. You've read the book and you kind of understand what the job of the intern. But go to his book to this to this link that I have and it talks about uh, what's expected of their interns. And um, it's not easy. Michigan State, a nine month training program. Michigan State's probably the leading university in doing local food production. And they are pretty far north and they're doing some pretty great things for year round production in Michigan State. A 48 week CSA is available on Michigan State campus. So, 48 weeks, a basket of produce. Pretty impressive. Something that we have talked about a little bit and, and maybe not as much as as I thought we should, so maybe something I wanted to talk about is what's your farm going to look like? How diversified is your farm? Or how specialized is your farm? Advantages and disadvantages to, to both. We have a person that comes to our farmer market and he's the potato man. Well, his main, probably 80% of his sales is potatoes. He's very specialized and he's good at growing potatoes 
and he has the equipment and the, and the means necessary to be a successful potato farmer. Very specialized. Or do you want to be diverse? Are you looking at a CSA opportunity and need to produce a lot, large number of products? Do you want to have livestock? Do you believe in that permaculture and sustainability that all the things have to work together to be really successful? So a decision you have to make and here at the college we're trying to be diversified just as we try to educate people and I think uh, that's important. But I can see the advantage of specialization as well. And it doesn't have to be one crop. You don't have to be the potato guy. But it can be five crops that you can specialize in growing and, and maybe some annuals and some perennials. You know, develop a market for rhubarb and, and grow a lot of rhubarb. It's easy to grow organically and but you have to develop the market before you really can become specialized. So just a list of some diversified farm products, uh, livestock and vegetables and perennials and fruit and row crops, agritourism, CSA, on-farm dinners, bed and breakfast, and the list goes on and on of, of the products that can make you more diversified. Uh, do you want to have a corn mace and do you want to sell pumpkins and do you want to have a fall festival and how diversified do you want to be? And that also helps you make some decisions on labor and management and how much capital you're going to need. And But I think in the whole scope of things, the diversification is the key to a permanent sustainable farm. And then something that I think gets overlooked. Why do I want to be a small farmer? Well, the healthy, tasty food for your family is, is something that I really think you have to evaluate. You can provide healthy, nutritious, season, seasonally abundant food for your family. And I think that's important. That also provides you an opportunity to work together, uh, to build relationships. You can save money on your food bill and generate some income from the farm as well. And there's some big tax advantages to owning a farm and I'm not an accountant or do nor do I play one on TV. But I know that there are some tax advantages that you can take advantage of if you own a small farm. And in my opinion, as we start to wrap things up here, um, there's only going to be an increased interest in local grown food. I think that's only going to continue and become more of an importance at the grocery and at the farmer's market and at the food hub. I know there's a large need for small farmers. We're developing these markets and we're developing the demand and we have to be able to work on the supply side as well. There's lots of training opportunities. Several community colleges and university in the state of Illinois are providing some training opportunity. And I think we're working on getting back to the seasonal the seasonal diet. And um, consumers have to understand that all year long you're not going to be able to eat whatever products that you necessarily want to eat. Okay, so we're in week 12 and you say, I've read enough of books, I've interviewed enough people, and I don't want to be a farmer. Maybe it's the resources do not make it feasible. You don't really have that appeal to, of the hard work and the manual labor. You don't necessarily believe that it's a full-time job and you're already working a full-time job and you don't want two jobs. So some things I'd like you to consider is a small garden in your backyard. Maybe um, three or four or five chickens in a backyard poultry. Uh, flock, some simple herbs that you can use um, for your kitchen, and I encourage you to support the local farmers by going to the farmers market and buying their product, and and just support the local food economy. I think that's I think that's an important thing you could do as well. So as we wrap up again, thank you for participating. I hope I had um, made you think, brought you some insight and help you make a decision on if you want to be a small farmer in the future. Thank you.